Okay guys, so this is another super, super highly requested videos from my subscribers and my viewers. And that is to test out Blender and see how it previews, see how it loads, see how quickly it renders and just general usability. Now to get straight to the point guys, it works absolutely fine. There are zero issues. You can totally use it yourself. Even when running off Rosetta 2, there's absolutely no issues at all. And the point of this video isn't to go super in depth, that will come later on in future videos. It's mainly to just show you the current state of Blender and if it works and how well it works on the new M1 Max. Now this is of course a entry level, just a base model MacBook Air, 256 gigabyte SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM, and only the seven GPU cores. Now, just to start off with, I'll show you some of the demo files that I've downloaded. So I've taken one from each section and you guys are more than welcome to download these and also test it out yourself. I've downloaded the Splash Fox for Blender 2.90, which is the latest version. I've also downloaded the Nishita Sky demo from the Cycles section. Also the internal air pressure from the physics section and also the hi, my name is Amy animation, which from what I've read is a super, super demanding animation. So it's going to be interesting to see how the base model Mac Air copes with that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start from top to the bottom and we're just going to open up the Blender 2.9 Splash Fox, which is right here. And we'll see how quickly Blender opens. So three, two, one. And guys, you can see that is pretty quick. And there we go, that's loaded. And if we actually just preview this, you can see it's working straight away. Uh, I can even pan, tilt around. I can zoom in. Even if I zoom in really, really close, there's absolutely no issues at all. That is playing back almost in real time. You can see up here, I'll see if I can make it a bit clearer. The FPS, so we're getting about 16 to 17 frames per second playing back in real time. So that is very, very impressive. And then if we actually come up here and we render out a image, we'll see how quickly this takes to render. All right, so that took 32 seconds to complete. And as you can see there, absolutely no issues. The render worked fine. It looks absolutely awesome. And what I'll actually do at the end of the video is I'll come back to this particular scene and I'll actually render out the entire scene. I'll only do a hundred frames. I won't let it do the full, I think it's a thousand frames for this particular render, um, but we'll have the activity monitor up and we'll just see how intensive it is on the RAM and particularly the CPU. Because when I did some brief testing on Blender before, it just straight away maxed out the CPU usage, which is what you want. So let's close that down for the time being and we'll exit out of Blender. And again, you can see how quickly this will shut down. So three, two, one, just straight away, guys. Absolutely no issues there. Now we'll go into the Sky demo. We'll open that up. So we've got zero issues here as well. If I play this, you won't actually be able to see it because I believe it's actually just the camera which is animated, but again, like we can zoom in without any issues onto this. Now guys, just wanted to say I am a Blender noob. I don't really know much about this particular program. I have used Autodesk and Cinema 4D in the past, so I'm more familiar with those, uh, but Blender, not so much. So for this one, let's actually bring up the activity monitor and let's do a single frame render while we bring up the activity monitor and you'll be able to see straight away the cpu might take a second there we go so the idle percentage is dropping zero percent idle so we can see now it's completely maxing out the cpu in terms of memory completely maxing out memory as well it's not actually using too much swap which is good and you can see there it's fully utilizing the CPU. There's no issues at all. And the memory. So if we go back to the render, you can see they're working absolutely fine, pretty quickly too. I won't um, do the whole render, just in the, for the purposes of time. 
So let's shut that down. And let's go into the next one, which is the internal cloth pressure. Again, loads up, no issues very, very quickly. And if we play this, no issues at all. Scroll around and pan while it's moving. Frames don't dip below 25. Zoom in. Absolutely no issues at all. And if we look at activity monitor while we're using this, it's using a decent chunk of the CPU, just to preview, but you've still got 75% left. And if we come into the memory tab, you've still got heaps of memory left as well. So you could very, very easily multitask while using Blender. I'm not gonna do it in this video, that's for a future video, but you can see that the Mac is absolutely performing without any issues at all. Now let's go into the final test, which is going to be the restaurant animation. Now I did notice when I launched this up before, the Mac does struggle with this a little bit, but that is to be expected. So let's play. Okay guys, so just so you understand what's going on here, this is playing back at about 10 frames per second, but this is rendering in real time. This isn't like a preview or anything like that. This is fully rendered. This is the wireframe and the 2D and 3D uh, polygons here, but this is the not quite fully, like it is still a preview, but it's playing back in real time, which is amazing. So if we go to the activity monitor again, CPU, again, still got heaps of CPU. You're only using about 20% for this particular program. And if we go memory, so it's definitely using more memory than the last file, but you've still got some room left. You've got about a gigabyte or so before you start using more of the swap. So that's very, very realistic. There's no issues there. And again, like we can zoom in, we can zoom out. And there's absolutely no issues playing this back. I think I'm getting a little bit close to her there. She probably doesn't appreciate that. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay. All right, so let's close that down and let's open up the first one again. And like I said before, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna render out a 100 frame animation so I'll just change the end frames here. So this is actually a thousand frame animation. So let's change it to a hundred. Let's play that just to make sure that it does end at a hundred, which it does. So let's come up here now and let's render that animation. And while that renders, I'm going to leave the activity monitor up and I'm gonna do a time lapse so you can have a little bit of a further look and see how the Mac performs. Okay guys, so as you can see, that was 100 frames and that took 23 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, now in terms of thermals, I'll actually have a FLIR overlay on the screen now and that will show you exactly how hot the machine got. Now I did this after the 20 minutes, so about three quarters of the way in, I tested it and at the hottest part, right in the middle where the CPU is, 
I was getting about 43 to 44 degrees Celsius, which again is not very hot at all. Uh, obviously this is gonna be thermally throttling around then, so you will lose some performance. And if we do just a touch test now, it is obviously hot, but it's not uncomfortably hot. Like it's not gonna burn your fingers or anything like that. So you wouldn't wanna have this sitting on your lap, but it's definitely usable. Now, moving on to the RAM usage, you would have seen during the render that the swap memory was being used a lot. So I think at one point we were up to six gigabytes. And if you guys wanna know why that may not necessarily be a good thing for your machine, uh, click up on the top right hand corner now and watch that video. Essentially what it's doing with the swap memory is it's writing the temporary files that should be stored in your RAM onto your SSD. And over time that may or may not cause your SSD to fail quicker. Who knows, most SSDs will last for you know, 10, 12 years, but if you're rendering all day long and you're using six, seven, eight gigabytes of swap memory all day, you might potentially see some degradation in your SSD. So I think it's safe to say for Blender, I definitely recommend getting 16 gigabytes over the eight gigabytes. And I haven't really seen any other videos on this particular topic. I think most of the mainstream YouTubers don't really focus on Blender. Um, but I would definitely recommend getting 16 gigabytes at this stage before we can do further testing. It's gonna be very interesting to see when we do test the eight gig versus the 16 gig model, if Blender is able to use that extra eight gigabytes and give you a quicker render time. Who knows, we'll have to test that a bit later on. In terms of CPU, I mean, again, you guys would have seen during the time lapse, it uses a lot of the CPU. Nothing too crazy there, you already would have known that. Um, but it's good to see that it is even running on Rosetta 2. It uh, uses up all of the CPU. So there was almost nothing idle throughout that entire time. So that was very impressive. Okay, so as you can see there, Blender worked without any issues at all. We were getting very decent performance and also very decent thermals as well. Now again, this was just a really brief introduction video to Blender just to see if it works on the new M1 Silicon. So if you do wanna see additional testing and analysis, make sure you stay tuned. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.